Welcome to today's class. Today we will be talking about the concept of ocean deposits. Now ocean deposits is an important section in oceanography. We basically talk about whatever life that exists in the ocean and how through the process of erosion from the land, the sediments keep moving. Along with sediments, there are various minerals that move into the water and they get deposited in the ocean bottom or we have the ocean bed here okay so for this we have classification that is basically done on three bases first is based on the source of deposit the next is based on the sediments that are being deposited and the third is based on the location of deposit where the deposits are being get it, uh, are being accumulated so these are the three fundamental bases on which we will talk about the concept of ocean deposits so we'll start with the very first that is based on source when we talk about based on source we have a broad classification where we can classify it by seven types it's the heterogeneous or the heterogeneous deposits coming from the land you have hydrogenous deposits this includes carbonates, manganese nodules, phosphorite. These are the main ingredients that we talk about in the hydrogenous deposits. You have biogenous that is uh, through the accumulation of biological microorganisms or planktons. Then you have the red clay, mostly common in North Pacific, Mid-South Pacific region. It's a kind of clay that is being deposited and this clay has kind of radioactive or volcanic origin. The next is the cosmogeneous deposits. These are extra terrestrial deposits. From kind of meteors or meteorites that is trying to Earth or the ocean surface. So these are known as cosmogeneous deposits. Then you have volcanic deposits which are coming up from the volcano or are extracts of volcano. So they can be either subaerial coming up from the uh, volcanic explosions that occurred on the land surface or submarine the volcanic explosions that occurred beneath the ocean surface. Then finally you have inorganic precipitates. They are formed in atmosphere. So they are formed in atmosphere and slowly and gradually deposited into the ocean basin. Now out of these, there are two most important that is the lithogeneous or the telogeneous deposits and the biogeneous deposits which we will be talking in detail in the next slide. So let's start with the first that is the lithogeneous deposits. Now under lithogeneous deposits we have the various kinds of mud that we talk about. We have the terrigenous mud, blue mud, green mud, red mud, turbides and condorites. Now among these, condorites are formed from uh, on the level of contour. They are usually 500 meters in thickness. Then you have turbides. They are due to the turbid movements of the water or the kind of uh, uh, graded bedding I should say. The next is red mud. How is red mud deposited? So red mud is basically occurring through uh, iron oxides that are present into the soil. So you have iron oxide that is being deposited into the ocean surface. Okay. And now green mud and red mud are somewhat interrelated. So green mud we say it's rich in iron and sulfur. Okay. And when this, sorry, blue mud is rich in iron and sulfur and when this blue mud reacts with seawater, it gives rise to green mud. So this is how we have the formation of blue mud and green mud. Blue mud is deficient in oxygen. Okay. And then finally you have the terrigenous mud or the mud that is coming from the flow of the land. 
they are usually uh, since they are coming from the soil they have rich organic content so it's high organic content and because of the high organic content it's usually black or very dark in color these are the uh, kind of deposits that are being uh, that, that come into the ocean from the land surface and they are uh, the, we have talked about the basic characteristics of these deposits. The next deposit that we would be talking about today is the biogenous deposits. Biogenous deposits, as we previously mentioned, are from the microorganisms, planktons, or oozes that are being deposited. Now, when we talk about biogenous deposits, we classify them into two basic types the calcareous deposits and the silicon deposits. So, you have the siliceous ooze and the calcareous ooze. Now, calcareous ooze is classified as globigerinia, pteropod and copolithophore while silicon, uh, siliceous ooze is classified under diatoms and radiolin. Now, there are numerous questions where it is asked what kind of ooze is diatom, whether it is a calcareous ooze or a siliceous ooze whether it is a biogenous deposit or it is a lithogenous deposit. So in such, such types of question, what is important here to understand is you should have some trick to remember these kind of questions. So the easiest trick here would be, uh, you can remember this as, this section as hotel medicine. So when I say hotel medicine, RA stands for radiolarina. DI stands for diatoms and SO stands for siliceous ooze. So you have a mnemonic that you can remember that is hotel medicine and this hotel medicine will help you remember which all are included in the siliceous ooze or have a predominant silica and which would be included in the calcareous ooze which have predominant calcium. So when we talk about these oozes, it's important to know that calcareous ooze, since it has calcium as its main element, it has high sol solubility and high lime content as compared to siliceous ooze. And in calcareous ooze, you have globigerina that is mainly found in Atlantic Ocean. You have around 64% of calcium content as compared to aeropods which have around 80% of calcium content mainly found in Indian Oceans. So you have Globigerina predominantly found in Atlantic. It's the most common usually in the shade of blue-green to whitish tint. That's the main shape. Then you have pteropods, as I said, you have 80% calcium. You have uh, kind of aerodynamic shells that are present in pteropods, mainly found in the Indian Ocean. Then finally, coconithophore, these are minute single cell, uh, single cell structures, very small that are present. In very low percentage, you can see cocolithophore as a part of calcareous ooze. Then as a siliceous ooze, as we already talked about, silica is the main content. Since silica is the main content, it's usually found in lower water levels, uh, or I should say much deeper water levels as compared to uh, the others. Diatoms are small single cell animals, uh, kind of amoebas, which are found under the ocean. Then you have radiolinas. These are again uh, single cell organisms which are found in mainly in warm equatorial water. So the main characteristic for uh, radiolinas are they are found in warm equatorial waters as compared to diatoms. Diatoms are usually um, yellow colored when they are away from the land and uh, they are bluish when they are close to the land. So you have the shades of blue when near to the land and yellow when they are away from the land. So this is the major classification that we talk about under biogenous deposits. 
So this all classification is going under the first topic that we have talked about that is uh, deposits based on source. Now we can see this diagram. Under this diagram, I am trying to explain the depth of carbon compensate, carbonate compensation. We call it CCD or the carbonate compensation depth. Till this depth, you have calcareous ooze that can be formed. Below this depth, you have siliceous ooze that are found. And in the last zone, you have the red clay deposits or the red clay deposits from the lower zone. So this is as we move down with depth into the ocean. You have the top layers of calcareous ooze. You have the CCD or the carbonate compensation depth. This is till the level where carbonate is absorbed. Below this you have silica as a predominant content. You have calcium as a predominant content here. And finally in the lower moon zone you have red clay as a predominant content. Now when we talk about specifically about the type of oozes that are found from the biogenous deposits. We say pteropods are found usually in upper layers with high uh, content of calcium carbonate usually 90% you have globigerina around the middle zone of the till the level of CCD or the, uh, de the depth level which we call for carbonate compensation it's around 20% in the lower levels you have red clay as a predominant deposit now the next classification is based on the type of sediments we have already talked about the various sources from which ocean deposits can be formed. Under this topic, we would be covering the, uh, the classification which is based on sediment. So you have the first that is littoral. This type of sediment comes from land or I should say continental shelf or continental shore region. Okay. The next is the pelagic deposits. These are found in the abyssal plains or the Lowermost levels of the ocean floor. This abyssal plain we have already talked about when we have talked about the relief features of ocean bottom. You have heavy pelagic zone, heavy pelagic sediments. These include the pelagic and the terrigenous deposits. So these terrigenous deposits are those deposits that are coming from land. And some of those which are coming from the pelagic regions, uh, usually in the form of green volcanic ash, you have a kind of coral muds that, has, that have been coming into this region. So you have coral mud, you have kind of volcanic ash flow that is coming into. And finally the last one is the eupelagic that includes the cosmic and the marine structure. So you have cosmic and marine deposits that you can find in the eupelagic zone. The best example is red clay, radiolinas, you have pteropods, globigerinas and so on. Then you have the next classification which is based on location of deposit. Now this classification talks about where as to where the deposit would be uh, settling down. Okay. So you have the continental region so the deposits would be Settling down near the continental floor or the continental base. So under continental you have three classifications. You have littoral, shallow waters and terrigenous. So littoral as we know is the land area, the closest region of the land. Then you have the shallow waters, the waters that are very immediate to the littoral zone. And finally you have the terrigenous region which is beyond I should say 1000 fathoms. So you can say this is up to 1000 1, fathoms and this is beyond 1000 fathoms. Okay. And this continental deposit then on constitutes around 60% of quartz deposit. The next is the lactic deposit. These are usually found in shallow seas. And finally you have the pelagic deposit. These are found in more depth and they are usually rich in silica and calcium. So we will have to understand the concept of uh, the sources based on the classification based on source for calcium and silica again. 
So among all these, uh, so we have talked about the various three classifications that talk about ocean deposits. Among all these three, the classification based on source is most important. Among the classification based on source, we have various kinds of those littoral deposits and biogenous deposits are the primary things that we must understand. So the classification of blue mud, green mud and red mud as per the lithogenous classification and then under the biogenous classification we talked about calcareous ooze and silicon ooze, siliceous ooze. The siliceous ooze we have already learned a mnemonic that is Hotel Redison that would help you remember the two things that is radio helium and diatoms that are part of siliceous ooze and then the remaining three that is the globigerina, uh, coccolithophore and terop uh, teropods would be under the calcareous ooze. So with this we covered the complete topic on ocean deposits. We would be covering the next class uh, with tides and other phenomena in ocean. Till then have a good day ahead. You can subscribe to examinees channel for further updates.